Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a horrible thing. Truly horrible, very biased, and frankly unforgivable. At least that's what I've been told by some very well-informed folks over on Reddit. And this is hard to say. It's difficult to come clean and admit what I've done, but I'll, I'll just come out and say it. I benchmarked the 4070 Ti using FSR in six of the 50 games I benchmarked. That's right, I used FSR. Well, actually, in one of the games, FSR was enabled by default, so I guess I can only be directly blamed for the horrible thing I did in five of the 50 games tested, but still, that's no excuse. Okay, so that was my most sarcastic introduction to a video, probably ever, but there is a good reason for that. What I thought was very reasonable and a fair approach to tackling an issue kicked off a bit of a shitstorm, it has to be said, and it escalated to absolutely absurd levels over on Reddit, with countless users claiming things they simply had little or no knowledge of. I know, crazy stuff, you're all shocked, but the good news is we can now set them straight, which I'm sure won't help avoid this sort of thing in the future, but it will provide you with some useful benchmark data. So I guess a bit of backstory first to be in order. When comparing the GeForce RTX 4072 and Radeon RX 7900 XT head-to-head -head in 50 games, I decided to include a lot of ray tracing enabled results. As ray tracing has continued to become an increasingly important aspect of GPU performance, despite the fact that every time we try and poll your interest in ray tracing, the data generally comes back looking very bleak for the technology. Seems like most of you still don't find the visual upgrade significant enough to warrant the massive performance hit, but I suppose that's a separate issue. Anyway, there were a few games like Cyberpunk 2077, which were actually a really good showing for ray tracing. And this specific example, we saw frame rates dip below 30 FPS on the 4070 Ti at 4K with RT enabled. But with upscaling, we could get that back up over 40 FPS. And since I don't expect any of you will want a game at 17 frames a second, I felt the upscaling data would be more useful, even if it's not truly showing 4K performance. The next challenge we faced was, which upscaling technology to use? Basically, the options included testing the GeForce RTX GPUs with DLSS, or to keep it as apples to apples as possible, just test everything using FSR. And given that we are trying to accurately compare frames per second performance of each product, we always like to keep the testing as apples to apples as possible. In fact, our main concern here was providing AMD with an unfair performance advantage over NVIDIA. Uh, we know that DLSS is the superior upscaling technology, generally providing better image quality. And we also know that in terms of FPS performance, GeForce GPUs generally perform much the same using either DLSS or FSR. So, the concern was that we didn't want to run into a title where FSR looked noticeably worse than DLSS and also provided greater frame rate performance. Also, it could be a situation where there's a game that we've previously compared the two technologies in that later sees a game update that could change those results, potentially resulting in a performance advantage for FSR. So, to avoid all of those potential issues, we felt that testing both GPUs with the same open source upscaling technology was going to be the best option. Now, after the 4070 Ti versus 7900 XT content went live, I saw quite a few comments in that video complaining about how biased the content was, as we didn't use DLSS on the 4070 Ti. And this is despite mentioning several times that in terms of image quality, DLSS is superior to FSR, but we used FSR for the benchmark numbers as we wanted to keep the comparison as apples to apples as possible. Having noted all that criticism, I decided to make a community post addressing some of what really were misconceptions around this topic while also running a poll to get your feedback. Thankfully, the majority of you did agree with our decision, but even so, the results were fairly split, it has to be said. Interestingly, this post in our community tab led to multiple threads on Reddit, essentially calling us out for using FSR on GeForce GPUs. And it was quite troubling to see a number of low effort posts with no evidence or any real information for that matter getting heavily upvoted, while those explaining both sides of the story were heavily downvoted. And the primary argument we saw, or rather the assumption that was made from those who opposed our choice to use FSR, strongly believed that DLSS is something NVIDIA is accelerating using their tensor cores, and therefore DLSS would be faster than FSR on a GeForce RTX GPU. Mind you, 
There is no evidence to support this beyond NVIDIA's own marketing materials. And if you just spend five seconds looking on YouTube, searching up stuff like RTX 3080 FSR versus DLSS or any other popular GeForce GPU, you will find plenty of user content comparing various games with the two upscaling methods, showing virtually identical frame rates. And of course, we've done our own in-house testing in the past, some of which has been shared on the channel, and I did link that in my community post. Anyway, as far as I can tell, this is the main hang-up those of you who oppose our testing have, and with no actual evidence to support the claims, I did what we always do, and I got benchmarking. So let's go take a quick look at that. Right, so first up, here's a look at DLSS quality mode versus FSR quality mode in Dead Space. And please note, I've only used the quality modes for all of the testing in this video. As you can see in this example, there is no frame rate performance difference between the two upscaling methods. The 4070 Ti delivered 141 FPS using either technology at 1440p and 76 FPS at 4K. As for scaling, at 4K, the 7900 XT saw a 45% performance increase when using FSR, whereas the 4070 Ti saw a significantly more substantial 73% increase. It's the same story in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and this data here can be verified by anyone with a Radeon and GeForce GPU, as we're using the built-in benchmark. The 4070 Ti provided the same result using FSR and DLSS at both tested resolutions, and as for scaling, the 4070 Ti saw a 38% increase when using FSR at 1440p, and then the 7900 XT a 34% increase. Then at 4K, both the 4070 Ti and 7900 XT saw a 39% increase. Next up, we have The Witcher 3, and here the 4070 Ti was 2-4% faster when using FSR opposed to DLSS. Not exactly a significant performance difference, but in this example, FSR was repeatedly faster than DLSS. The 7900 XT saw a 49% increase when using FSR at 1440p and 74% at 4K, whereas the 4070 Ti saw a 49% increase at 1440p and then 69% at 4K, so a slightly larger uplift there for the Radeon GPU at 4K. Dying Light 2 was tested using the high quality ray tracing mode as this enables DirectX 12. Here the 4070 Ti saw the exact same level of performance using either FSR or DLSS, and scaling was also slightly better for the Radeon GPU at both tester resolutions. Hogwarts Legacy also saw the same level of performance for the 4070 Ti using either FSR or DLSS, with no more than a 2% performance discrepancy. Hitman 3 also saw no change in performance when using either upscaling method with the 4070 Ti. Both delivered 71 FPS at 1440p and then 38 to 39 FPS at 4K. The performance uplift when using FSR was also similar for both GPUs. Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide did run slightly better when using DLSS. The 4070 Ti was 4% faster at 1440p and 2% faster at 4K. Not exactly big margins there, but this is the first example we have seen where DLSS was repeatedly a few frames faster than FSR. And we also found DLSS to be a few frames faster in Death Stranding, though in this example we're only talking about a 1-3% to difference in performance, so again nothing statistically significant here. The F122 results are surprising. Here FSR was 11% faster than DLSS, with the 4072 at 1440p, and then 14% faster at 4K, and these results were recorded using the built-in benchmark, with the ultra high quality preset, and they are of course based on a three run average. So in this example, testing the 4070 Ti using DLSS would place it at a disadvantage in the benchmark graph. That said, while I did test F122 with ray tracing enabled in my big head to head benchmark, I didn't use upscaling of any sort, as the frame rates were already quite high, at least at 1440p. Forza Horizon 5 has a very typical set of benchmark results for us. In short, FSR and DLSS provided identical frame rates. Oddly though, FSR seems broken on the 7900 XT in this title, as we saw no performance uplift when using it. Forza Horizon 5 though has proven to be a very poor title for RDNA 3, so I suspect this is some kind of driver related issue. Moving on to Spider-Man Remastered, here we have yet another example where FSR and DLSS provided identical results at both tested resolutions, so there's not much more to say here. Atomic Heart, like F122, did see the 4070 Ti performing better with FSR opposed to DLSS. In this example, we're looking at a 4% uplift at 1440p, and then a more substantial 8% increase at 4K. So, whereas the 4070 Ti would have only matched the 7900 XT if we were to use DLSS, 
it's 7% faster when using the same upscaling method. Last up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, which I've tested twice, once with RT disabled and then again with RT enabled. First, using the standard Ultra preset, we find no difference between FSR and DLSS with the 4070 Ti. Performance is basically identical. And then with RT enabled, we find the same thing. FSR and DLSS resulted in the same level of performance with the 4070 Ti. So from a performance standpoint, it doesn't matter which upscaling method you use in this title, frame rates will be the same. Though despite that, we highly recommend GeForce users opt for DLSS as it does generally provide greater image quality. Well, that was a lot of drama and false accusations over nothing, wasn't it? As we found previously, generally speaking, FSR and DLSS deliver a similar level of performance boost for GeForce GPUs, but we did find a few examples where FSR was notably faster, which is very important for benchmark comparisons. Again, I really need to make this as clear as I can. We are by no means suggesting that FSR is in any way better than DLSS in those examples where frame rates are higher. As the image quality of DLSS is almost guaranteed to be superior, therefore GeForce owners should still use NVIDIA's proprietary upscaling technology. The reason we didn't in our graphs though, while still stressing that DLSS is generally superior technology in terms of image quality, which was actually noted by a Reddit user who got heavily downvoted, is because we wanted to provide you with apples to apples data and I think we've now proven that we did just that. Sure, you can still argue, if I'm going to buy a 4070 Ti, then I'm going to use DLSS, so FSR benchmarks are completely pointless for me. And I saw plenty of people making that exact argument. But as Reddit user Super Nanocat points out, review outlets such as ourselves are looking at relative performance, which is why we often test the way we do. So, you know, apples to apples, as I've said a thousand times now. Also, as Potential Astronaut 39 pointed out, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And that's something us reviewers are all too painfully aware of. And if you think we're trying to please everyone, we're not. That's just an impossible goal. Rather, we are trying to do what we believe is right. We know, for example, if we don't use any upscaling at all, people will still scream AMD shill because DLSS is better than FSR. And they will have somehow convinced themselves that we're trying to pretend DLSS doesn't exist, despite talking about how good it is several times at the conclusion of the very video they're commenting on. We're also damned if we use DLSS for GeForce and FSR for Radeon, as FSR often doesn't look as good and could provide AMD with a performance advantage, as we've just found. Meanwhile, we're also damned if we try to make an apples to apples comparison by using the same upscaling technique for all GPUs, as we found in our recent 4070 Ti versus 7900 XT content. Therefore, after careful consideration, we've come to the conclusion that for these big head-to-head -head benchmarks, we won't use any upscaling at all, something that Dude That Cooks and many others have suggested. Again, this doesn't solve the issue entirely. People will still cry biased because their own personal biases mean you're either with them or against them in supporting the corporation they love. But it does solve an obvious issue for us we're actually testing at the resolution we claim to be. Testing at 4K with DLSS or FSR isn't actually testing at 4K, and if we're going to claim to be benchmarking at 1440p and 4K, we should really make sure we're rendering at those resolutions. So problem solved, we're dumping upscaling entirely for those benchmarks. As for product reviews, so say a day one review of the 4070 Ti, we will still include DLSS benchmarks there for the specific section of the review that looks at upscaling, but we're going to dump upscaling from the big benchmark videos. So there you have it, all sorted then. I will just say that it would be nice if we could have better discussions about this sort of stuff. Just because someone has a different opinion doesn't mean they're instantly morally corrupt. They just have a different opinion. They might even be wrong, but screaming shill from the hilltops isn't going to help solve the problem, and it certainly doesn't strengthen your position. It's also good to have some supporting evidence to back up your arguments, because relying on marketing material from beloved corporation, not a great strategy either. Anyway, just some food for thought, I guess. And I'm going to end this one here. If you enjoyed the video, do get a thumbs up. If you absolutely hated it and you think we're wrong and shills and just the worst things in the world, then I guess give it a dislike. You'll have to install the browser app so you can see it and enjoy that dislike. But otherwise, 
yeah, good stuff. Also subscribe, even if you do dislike it, because I'm sure we'll be able to make more content that you can dislike in the very near future. That's our goal anyway. Um, you can also support us over at Floatplane or Patreon. Sign up to either one of those things. We'll give you more Harbour Unbox goodness, access to exclusive live streams, uh, our Discord server. That's a cool place to hang out. Behind the scenes content, Q&A. a lot of cool stuff there. So check it out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And whether you liked the video or disliked it, hey, Thanks for watching this far. Good stuff for us, and I'll see you again next time.